So I've been pretty busy building something that has quickly become not only the biggest thing in my world, but also the coolest, hands down, by far. And today, I'm going to show it to you guys. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode here on the survival world that I spend way too much time on. <laughs> so last time, we built the library over here. And you might remember that this hallway, this was just a black wall, kind of like that one. Well, now it is something a little bit bigger. <laughs> so it starts up here with a minecart. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So yeah, I built a uh, dragon egg room and today I wanted to start a new series called build tours where basically I build it 99.99% off camera and then I show it to you guys in some pretty good detail so that if you wanted to make it too, you could probably pull it off just by watching this video. And of course you can leave comments with any questions. So let's get started with the upstairs here so i started by making this hallway and then i added the texture that we like so much and actually i'm gonna turn off shaders just so we can get a better look uh, i started by adding these little cells here and then i didn't really know what to do so i was like oh well i'll make a mine shaft that goes down so i built this huge cave and i made this by hand by the way this did not exist before i'll show you guys that after and then I thought, oh, well, let's make a gate. And then after the gate, I decided, well, I might as well make a dragon egg room because I haven't made one yet. And I thought it'd be a really cool build that really serves no purpose, but is really big. <laughs> and I really like building those. So the next step was to clear out this room and turn it into this. Uh, there was a cave here before. If I get into my cheaty cam here, there was a cave, as you can see but I almost didn't use it. I only used the ceiling part of it. And even some parts like back here, I had to dig out and ooh, that's no good. All right, we'll ignore him for now. So once the room was dug out, uh, the first thing that I did was sort of decide the dimensions and how I wanted it to be presented. I think that was a really hard thing to come up with was like, how do I want you to see the egg when you come in from the minecart over here? And I decided on going with this like broken wooden bridge with little bits in the water all the way to a little island with an egg with a little statue, a uh, little like symbolic little thing there that holds it up with the beacon and then some little extra pizzazz. And even with the shaders, uh, it looks pretty good, though I find the water reflection kind of ruins it uh, for this space. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, because I'm sort of undecided if it's better with or without shaders. <laughs> so if you guys could let me know, that'd be really cool. So once I had that figured out, I started doing these wall decorations and I started building this castle and I really like this castle. And I thought it'd be cool to have this theme where the castle slowly kind of blends into uh, the cave and it looks like some ancient ruined temple, but really um, it's it's not it's just like a castle that had a treasure room I don't know a lot of ideas went through this uh, <laughs> a lot of different ideas and then I had the idea of getting the fire to turn on which by the way the hardest thing I think I've ever done in Minecraft and I got to give a big shout out to my good friend Blitzy who helped me create well basically he created uh, a data pack that would enable fireballs to be shot straight down onto here because otherwise they would always miss, which was really annoying. <laughs> so with the custom data pack, uh, you can actually make them hit from this far away 100% of the time. And that's what gives that effect when you walk in. And also you'll notice uh, these sections are actually identical to the entrance. Like they're all the same but I wanted to make them look like these have been kind of overgrown and maybe the, the soil has eroded or the stone has slowly taken over. And one of the biggest challenges that I faced uh, building this room was actually getting the lighting just right. 
I'm really thankful Mojang added some more lighting effects and different light levels with certain blocks, but it'd be really cool if there was a way to kind of edit it even more and really get the precise light level that you're looking for. Like, let's say these glow berries, uh, they look really good, but I find they're too bright. Like, it's too much, but, you know, it's, it's all we got, so we kind of have to take it. I wish there were more settings uh, within the video settings to be able to edit that without having to download outsourced mods to do it. Now, you're probably looking back here and thinking, what the heck is all this nether brick doing here? Well, that's the classic symbol uh, in my base. That means I'm going to build here. I just don't know what it is yet. It's kind of like having the knife with mayonnaise halfway leaning into the sink, you know? <laughs> it's like, I know something's going to go here. I'm not, I'm not calling it off. I just don't know what yet. Um, these two doors, I do imagine something where there's a room behind there. And if you guys have any ideas for what that room could be, let me know. Just keep in mind, if you watched my old video, uh, oh yeah, we don't talk about this. Uh, I'm tearing this down. <laughs> uh, this is the library. So not that much space, but maybe an alchemy lab or something like that. So with that, now we can say goodbye to this room and to leave, it's pretty easy. This button doesn't work because this is a stair. So you kind of just have to push it for now. And as we leave, I trigger once again, the activator rail, which shuts off the fire. Oh, two out of four that time. I will fix that. <laughs> and the beacon turns off. I just need to implement uh, data pack for these as well, but it's already created. I just got to change the value. So that's about it for the main part of the room here. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Obviously, there's a lot of detail and there's some fish and all that stuff, but that's pretty easy to figure out just by watching. I don't really have to talk about it all that much. Now I'm going to show you guys how the redstone works here. So it all starts from this activator rail, which triggers, if I go back into my chest monster back here, triggers a, a T flip flop, which gives me two conditions on and off. So right now it's on in the on state, which means the beacon is on and which means it triggers the, um, it triggers the dispensers with the fire charges to shoot out. But here's where the cool bit comes out. Since it's a T flip flop, I can remotely activate these separately. So here I have lingering potions, which put out the fire afterwards. Again, running um, a data pack to make those work because otherwise it just doesn't. Uh, they don't always hit. So they're on two separate signals here and it's pretty cool. Uh, it works 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> but uh, of course, always little hiccups in the redstone. If there's lag or something, sometimes uh, they don't shoot. But in the clip I just showed you guys, uh, it worked pretty well, which I am super happy about. So that's pretty much it for this build, The Egg Room. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> it helps the channel. And let me know what you guys think of this new format of video. Uh, let me know if you like it and if I should do more like this or if we should just go back to the regular Let's Play. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.